everybody, and that's why it's spreading so far and so fast. Because somebody, where, when we cough, where do most people cough? And now I touch. Touch the doorknob, sitting on an airplane, my hands are here, the belt buckles, everything. You touch so much stuff every day and you don't know you're doing it, and that's part of the problem. So symptoms for uh, this COVID-19, you see all these spaces where there's nothing? It's because they don't know. They don't know the answers yet. <clears throat> the cold, the flu, norovirus, and then you got the COVID-19. So all these undetermined are things that they're still collecting data on. And again, that's changing. This was taken off the CDC website that was last week. I haven't checked it since then, but it may have changed already. How it spreads. This is a respiratory tract issue, so you're coughing, you're sneezing, it gets aerosolized. Now it is on your hands, it's I like cough on you, and or I'm even sitting here and I'm talking to you, right? What's coming up, right? See what you said, and that's the right thing to do. Make it obvious, like, do not come near me. Because even with me talking to you, I'm projecting out at you. So keep that in mind. You don't have to be actively coughing to pass this on. You could be just talking. And some people, you know, say it, don't spray it. Some people really spit when they talk. We've all seen those people. Things to start being aware of. So, person to person, close contact, droplets from sneezing and coughing, contaminated surfaces. You can live up on, on surfaces up to three days. Now, they're doing testing right now. You've got, you know, it'll last on paper for X amount of days, and it'll last on metal for X amount of time. Right now, the only thing we've been able to find that has not really changed is the three days. So assume everything is contaminated for three days unless it's properly cleaned. Spreads easily throughout the community, which is again why we're talking about this tonight. So all of us are aware, firefighters are aware, the community is aware, the select board, you know, if they have something that they need to put out to the town, they're aware as well. You don't have to be symptomatic to spread it. Again, two to four day incubation period. The average populations, 60 plus, right? Those are the ones that are dying from this. So keep that in mind. We have a lot of at-risk people in this community. Anybody that has chronic medical conditions, and it doesn't even have to be chronic, somebody could have just had surgery, they are at high risk because their immune system is down. So it doesn't necessarily have to be chronic. It could be something that just happened, recovering from surgery, and now you need to be quarantined, segregated. They don't need to be quarantined, but segregated so that you're not bringing something to them. Asthma, cancer, if you have someone that's already got like HIV or AIDS, they are going to be at high risk because they already developed lung issues. Lung disease, diabetes, immunocompromised. That's just a small list. Basically, if you have anybody with any kind of medical condition, or a chronic medical condition, that is going to bring down your immune system, and that's when you're very susceptible is when that immune system is down. So, if you have kids with asthma, anybody here have kids with asthma at home? That's actually awesome. You do. Okay, so they're going to have to be very careful when they're out and about. Practice hand washing, not touching your face, things like that. So, prevention. How many people went right out and went, I'm going to buy hand sanitizers? I know there's a couple of you in here, and you're not raising your hand. So, hand sanitizer is great for you know, you're going grocery shopping, you want to do something quick, that's fine. As soon as you're able to get to a source of water or soap, Soaking water is the best way to kill this. Soaking water 
the, the, and it doesn't have to be antibacterial soap, just soap, because it's the act of the rubbing of your hands together that's actually breaking up the proteins on the outside of that virus. It's breaking it down, and once you break that open, it's no good anymore. And then you're physically washing it away with the water. How long do you wash for? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Does it matter? I mean, I know you want to have hot water, but if you want to have hot water, it's still work well. That's cold right. Water. They've already said it doesn't matter. You know, don't don't get stuck on hot or cold. Get stuck on 20 seconds plus. Thorough hand washing, scrubbing the back of your hands. Okay. These are dirty. Okay, so if you can, uh, if you're going to be out and about, I've actually had to the point, I just leave these at home if I'm out grocery shopping, things like that. That way, I don't have to worry about trying to clean them later. So it's things like that. Everybody hold up your cell phone. When was the last time you cleaned up that cell phone? Before I left. Right. So, when was the last time? Who wears a belt? When was the last time you cleaned that? Right. So just think about that. You're all nice and clean. You touch your belt, and now you're not cleaning anymore. Things like that to think about. Our radios. When was the last time you scrubbed down your radio, right? You guys are probably doing it quite often now, I, I take it. So stay up three, six feet away from people. Proper hand washing. Um, now, the PTE, the, the, it says in there that it will cover us a little bit more. We already talked a little bit about the fire department, a little bit about the police department, a little bit about the ambulance. I wasn't sure if you guys were here, so I didn't put me in there yet. But we can talk about it. Um, so, I didn't put a whole lot into this slide because that's going to be more for like what we need to be doing, our gloves and gowns and things like that. That's not what the public is going to be needing. If you're at high risk, uh, try to quarantine if possible. One thing they don't have a lot of information on is infants. Kids seem to be very resilient to this. Like most kids don't even show signs and symptoms. But everybody else in their house is like, they're not really sick. The kids are like, well, what's your problem? Which is a great thing. But they don't have much information on infants or pregnant women. But they are saying because pregnant women are more susceptible to respiratory issues while they're pregnant, they put them in that high-risk category. I have seen a couple of stories, numbers that say that they two infants be contracted just to be able Oh, they do have numbers now. Oh, I said like one or two weeks. Okay, yeah. They so didn't have a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was, uh, the, the, the youngest I've seen reported is a 17 day old. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. Yeah, when I was doing all this uh, Saturday, they hadn't really been able to find a lot of numbers. So. Do they know if, uh, if since children don't get as bad, they know if it's still two or four? They're saying two to fourteen days no period, matter no matter what. Yeah. And so you guys could be like, hey, at fourteen days, I'm gonna step out of my house. Right? Do you think it's safe? Probably not. Because you don't know who doesn't want to stay at home. So don't get stuck on the fourteen day thing. Because you we don't know how quickly and how far this is gonna keep spreading. So keep Keep watching on the news, keep looking at the numbers and seeing what's going on. Avoid touching your face. And that for me is hard because I'm always people and I don't be like this or don't touch your face. Until you wash your hands. Sneeze, cough into your elbow. My daughter's really good if I go to sneeze, and she goes, use my aunt mama. So my daughter gets the concept. Wash down commonly touched items, your phone belt buckles, steering wheel in your car. How do you get into your car? When was the last time you washed the door handle in your car? The garage door opener. 
things like that. Things that you're constantly touching, they'll start being aware of it just right like them. Wash clothes every other day is what the CDC is suggesting if you've been out in public because you don't know who's touching you, brushing against you, what you've brushed against. So, wiping that down. And they're saying just normal, throw it in the washer, hot water, regular detergent, and then throw it in the dryer, no problems. Should kill it. So for the police department, this is just some of the stuff, information that we got from you, Chief. If I just speak, please speak up. So right now, if we're going to go, if we have a medical call, normally they're really good about backing up the ambulance, backing us up, and uh, being present, assisting us if need be. But for right now, because they don't have any of the protection, protective equipment, they're being told not to enter. Now, obviously, if it's a dangerous situation for us, they would definitely be going in. That being said, if it's just a normal medical call, guy, girl, whoever it is, isn't feeling well, they're being told to just stay outside. That's still my understanding, correct? Yes, we've actually gone one step further. We've already sworn in from any medical aid calls, unless we're requested to do so by the ambulance. Okay. And that would be generally for someone who's violent or, I mean, it would be a heart attack in front or something like that. Okay. Thank you. If the police department does arrive, don't forget, just keep that safe distance. And that's just in public in general now. Everybody should be keeping like that. Don't come into my zone. Washing your hands frequently, don't touch your face with unwashed hands, which with you guys, if you guys are making an arrest or you know dealing with the public the way that you guys do, which is different from the way the rest of us do, keep these things in mind. If you come into contact with somebody, let's say you have to arrest somebody, and you feel as though this person is symptomatic, they've got this weird cough, you're questioning it, do not transport them in your car. Call the ambulance, have the ambulance, let the ambulance know that they're symptomatic, or they mention to you, hey, I just got back from Spain. <laughs> okay, call the ambulance, have the ambulance do that transport because they have the protective equipment. When you guys are doing your job, the same thing with the ambulance, we're doing it in the fire department, anytime you've had contact with people in general, just wipe everything down if they've touched it. If multiple officers have to go to a scene, one officer goes in, if you're talking about um, a medical call. So, like you said, we're responding to a cardiac arrest. You might just be sending one officer in instead of multiple just in case that cardiac arrest was brought on by COVID-19 because they couldn't breathe. Is that a fair assumption? Yes. And if you guys have been potentially exposed or no exposure, repeat it to Chief Ducharme immediately. Like as soon as you're done with that call, make that call to him because he has to do his paperwork on that documentation. Make sure you're documenting it in the police reports as well. Who, who you were with, why you think you were potentially exposed, who else was there with you, whether it be a public person or civilian, whoever it was. Fire department, EMS, N95, mask or respirator, gowns, gloves, eye protection. They're saying not to allow family to ride. The fire department, we need to know this because there's a good chance we might be driving. So if we, yes. That's our policy now. Good. So just so you guys know, if the family asks before we get there, the answer is no. That is our new policy. Um, drivers of the ambulance. So whether, if it's us going to be driving the ambulance for them, do not get into the driver's compartment of that ambulance with any of your PPP, PPE on. 
You don't want to contaminate anything in there. You want all the contaminants to stay in the back. Thoroughly disinfect all the equipment brought in. So let's say we bring a medical bag in. We have to disinfect that bag. Okay, so we need to keep that in mind before we leave here for the day or the night or whatever. Everything's going to be disinfected. Notify the emergency room prior to arrival, so we'll be coordinating with you guys. They may look at us and say, hey, do me a favor, jump on the ward, call Wentworth Douglas, let them know that we have a patient with the following symptoms. That way, now, my understanding is they are already stopping people at the door, correct? Like, we're not even going to get through that door without those questions, but at least now they'll have a team ready to go and ready to receive that patient. <clears throat> Reporting, EMTs will fill out a one report and thoroughly document the call. This is, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I swear I'm not sick. This is from talking. <coughs> EMS documentation shall include a list of the EMS clinicians and public safety providers involved in the response of all the people that had contact. So if there's uh, mother, daughter, father, son there, they all get listed by name. We all get listed by name, anybody that had physical patient contact or was in the same house. All that needs to go into our documentation as EMTs because who's going to need that? If they test positive for the COVID, 19, then they're going to now need to notify these people and say, oh, by the way, anyone on the call in contact with the patient will notify, and this is for the fire department, will notify Chief Rutherford immediately if you can't get a hold of him, just start going down that list until you get a hold of a, a chief officer because they're going to have to document this as well and then we'll have to report. Chief has the authority to not allow any access back to the fire department until your 14-day period is up or you are symptom-free for a minimum of 72 hours if you do develop symptoms for any known or suspected exposures. If anyone in your family or work has symptoms and you have a duty to report, let the chief know because if they have symptoms or they've been in contact or you've been in contact with someone that does end up testing positive, you are on quarantine. We don't respond to calls. We notify the chief, let her know what's going on. Chief will keep records for any exposures and of anyone's self-reporting exposure to ensure a healthy working environment and to report to the state because now the state needs all these numbers so they can start finding the trends and tracking and see who's going where. If you become symptomatic, you need to report that as well. We're thinking for that right now, the uh, CDC has said that Clorox wipes, Lysol wipes, alcohol-based products with a minimum of 60% alcohol to them is effective in cleaning these. So those are luckily all easy things to go get from the store, keeping them in your cruisers. I don't know if you guys are already doing that or not. But um, when we are cleaning our stuff in the fire department, Gown, gloves, mask, and eye protection because now you're taking that stuff that's been right on there and you're getting the nook nooks back up in your face as you're cleaning. So wear PPE when cleaning. If you can't clean it, bag it and dispose of it. So in summary, in summary if you haven't already gone out, go get your toilet paper now. Apparently there's a shortage of that. Be vigilant, don't be dirty, wash your hands and faces, don't hug, shake, elbow bump, fist bump, if you get too close, you see a lot of people starting to knock shoes down. Stay away from high risk folks in case you are a carrier, and things are going to get worse before they get better, just like anything else. You're going to hope not to have that big peak and the bells curve, but hope to have kind of like you did, where flat comes off. Document and report very important. So, CDC 
website is constantly changing. It may be just like minimal updates, but at least they are updating that. If you don't see any changes on it, well, that's a good thing. It means they haven't discovered anything new. World Health Organization, that's also a good source to go look at just to kind of see what's going on in the world. Pandemic, and things are changing every single day. So just keep an eye on it. If you have questions, uh, feel free to call the fire department. If we have an answer, we'll certainly give it to you. If we don't, we will try to get it for you. And uh, be very careful of all the Facebook stuff that's going out because I've seen so much stuff on Facebook that people are like, oh my god, this is great information. I'm like, who is this doctor? Dr. Facebook should not be telling I've seen so many different things. So if it's not on the CDC website, I wouldn't believe a whole lot of other stuff out there unless you talk to your doctor. CDC website. World Health Organization or your own doctor. Okay? So I cannot stress that enough. Is there any other questions? I don't know if someone has Okay. No. Um, if you're going to the CDC website, go up your search bar, type www.cdc.gov. Do not go to Google to get to the CDC. They've already shut down four fake CDC websites. Not even joking. Google is routing you to the fake websites because of the way Google sets up their little trend so that if you click on it, the more clicks it goes to the higher in the food chain. So go make sure you're going to the legit CDC website. Also, if you have pets, I have talked to my vet and several others. You cannot transmit it to cat or dog, and cat or dog cannot transmit it to cat or dog. So if you get it, your pets are fine, you can hug your cat or your dog. Hang out with your pets, they're good. You're more, more likely to get something from your cat, it's like cat scratch fever, than you are to give Corona or any other to your cat. Just remember though, if somebody's been petting your dog or cat that's a carrier. That's a good one. Right? Um, I also want to add to the uh, provider policy. In the case of a pediatric patient, we're going to allow mom or dad to go. So. One can go, but anything adult or adults, you can go by. So I have a family member coming home from Vegas tonight. Would it be best if I recommend them to get tested right away, like just reasonably? No, no they're not going to just go and get tested, but I would recommend them to go home, directly right. home, shower immediately, wash everything they have with them, and don't come back outside for a few days. Have somebody else do all the shopping for them. My brother lives out in Vegas, and I'm hearing a lot of the horror stories out there. So, like, he won't even leave his house right now because that place is just. So, that's my suggestion. Just make sure they they stay quarantined because there's been a lot of pieces out there at this point. Even even doctors are canceling appointments because my doctors have canceled all of my appointments until the middle of April. Yes, that's another good point. A lot of doctors' offices are trying to limit the spread. So unless it's an emergency, they don't want to see people for um, just their annual checkups or anything like that. So also, um, we actually tested this theory. My husband has heart disease and he was able to get his, his medications, even though they're not due for another two weeks, they refill them. So if you do have prescriptions that are going to be coming close, go ahead and try that process now, because there may be a shortage on some medications that we do get from overseas. So keep that in mind, too. Anything else? Did you? Did you raise your hand or no? No. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all we have, so thank everybody for coming. Did you guys have anything else to add that we missed? Uh, one thing I'm going to add. Um, basically, our policy is going to be we're treating the corona patients the same way we would if they were a TB patient. Same precautions. Gown, booties, gloves, double glove, mask, N95, goggles, the whole shooting mask. This is if they were a TB. Why? Because it's the exact 
exact same precautions as a TB patient. So, George, the guys down at the transfer station, my suggestion for them, are you going to see them at all? We've already, stopped, we've already stopped them from helping people. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that, that was my suggestion. No, that would happen, yeah. 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 happen okay. Saturday. Okay. No stop chats. People, no, yeah. No chatting, no lingering. Right. No long. Try to and get out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming. We appreciate it. And fire department, we can go ahead. Well, and that's my I don't know if you want to, I mean, probably still run business if you want to, but yeah. 
or to something. Exactly, that's what we were thinking. Because well, I think, my, my opinion is I think we've got to try to limit the most we can. Yes. And I don't, you don't have people coming to the police station, do you? Well, we do. We've actually changed our operation. Um, I'm not letting any non-essential folks in the PD. Um, I even, so I've even instructed my part-time police officers not to report to the PD unless they are working. Um, <laughs> We're, we're mandated by law to continue to register like sex offenders on a quarterly basis. They're allowed to come into the lobby only, and we uh, we do all paperwork through the pass window. Perfect. So. I think most of the town office functions can be handled in a similar manner. Um, that you can either mail in all your things and we'll mail you something back, or you can put it in the drop box and we'll mail you something back. Yeah, perfect. So. You know, encouraging people to call and email questions and issues, and for something like a new car or something that really has to be done in person, we can try to make one-on-one -on -one appointments. And I think just that message will kind of um, communicate the gravity of the situation and discourage people to drop by. So, um, it's up to the board what the, what the time frame is on that and what the messaging is, but I, I do think that would be helpful for. At least a while. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what a while looks like. Did Tom have a uh, recommendation? He said minimally two weeks. Two weeks. And then we can play it by ear at that point. And see how it evolves. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, we, we can continue to evaluate things as we go forward. Um, meetings are, a, you know, select board meetings I think are manageable um, in as much as they have to happen, that they can happen in the conference room in the manner I described with the public in the hallway. Other meetings um, pose other challenges. Other meetings tend to be larger groups for the most part, but land use boards um, were up against um, property rights and people you know, we, we can delay those and postpone them, but ultimately we can't for six months, or, you know, I'm not sure that for six months we can deny somebody a right to a process with subdividing or developing their land. So those boards, because of the nature of sharing documents and looking together at plans and hearing from the public, um, you know, as much as we can think about technological solutions to um, virtual meetings would be helpful. Um, and having people submit writing. Can I just make a, you guys have the recent, which includes Google Hangouts? Yes. Which is a video conferencing solution? Yes. It's more about the Wi-Fi and having computers to carry that out. But yes, I, I want to look at things like that, because so I think that's a great solution if our Wi-Fi will support it and we can get people to bring devices that did the Wi-Fi get enhanced upstairs? It was. It's not that it got enhanced upstairs. It got moved upstairs because it wasn't the police department, oh, okay. and that was diminishing the signal by being, yep. you know, subgrade. So now it should be better. Yeah, it does definitely seem better. So, so the decisions we have to make tonight are about town hall. Town hall meetings. If the board, if the select board is going to meet less frequently, then I, then I would encourage you to consider um, giving me short-term emergency authority over welfare so that I can handle that as needed. I anticipate an increase in welfare given the economic effect of what's going on. Um, purchase orders. Um, Paul, the select board was um, nearly at the point of approving a revision to the purchasing policy. Currently, department heads can spend up to $200 within their budget for budgeted expenses without the authority of the select board. The select board was reviewing an amendment to the policy which would allow an increase up to $500. Um, so you haven't had a chance to review that, and I'll give you the language for that, but Denise had revisions to the policy, so I don't have those. I can give you what we've been looking at, but um, a short-term revision of $500, I think would be helpful. Let's, let's take these things one at a time so we can... Yeah, yeah I have a list, so I'm not going to lose track. So for Town Hall, I, I agree we should close it to public access for 
two weeks, I know it's two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. I'm in favor of closing town halls, yes. Okay. So I think by consensus we okay. agree to that. And obviously you would post, like tomorrow morning, you would post down the hall, close the public for the notice. On the wall, the door, run, and via email. Email, yep. wall box, and perfect. Yes, I would say that, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. My, my suggestion would be that people can continue to carry out business inside, answering the phones, responding to emails, and doing yeah. whatever we would normally do. I mean, the government's still going to run, and you guys are separated enough. We have good working space for this one, these conditions. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I think that they are separated, or can be separated enough to work within, you know, the re recommended
should that happen, can we extend pay for them to yes. not no. be incentivized to come to work? I think absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not fair to... Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm saying yes. Yeah. But, yes. What do you think, Denise? Well, the one thing you don't want is someone to come in because they, they think you're not going to pay us on and spread the, spread the sickness around. So right. that should be a real issue. I, I agree. I think that any illness that we are in, they absolutely, we want our employees to be home and get well up and get well before they come back in if this encourages them to do that, then we should. Okay. Um, the only thing, the only other thing that I, I just want to plant the seed about, um, I'm not expecting a decision about this tonight, but we are being told that this is likely to extend into July or August, um, Camp Raleigh, and, and whether or not Camp Raleigh should continue. Because if the schools are closed, the schools are closed, if the schools continue to be closed, it may not be wise to have a summer camp. I'm sorry to say. So, um, I just, you know, I, I don't yeah, think that's more discussion at this point, but just something to think about. Um, we do have to, no, I'm sorry, we, go, go we to have to um, make a decision soon on this, though, because we don't want to start taking people's money then having to turn around and give it back. Right. So, I know that they were very close getting their online registration going, and not that I think we have to make it tonight, but we do have to make it soon. Um, and, I, and I agree that we don't want a gathering of, they're recommending, a, you know, very low amount of people or something. Clearly, it's over 100 that go to Camp Raleigh and the staff. And you don't want to hire the staff if you don't have to have the program. Well, and I think we're going to have trouble hiring the rec director in this current atmosphere, too. Yep. Um, Celia has a comment. Um, the committee chairman for the rec committee has asked that we have a meeting, if possible. So I'd be interested in what your boards thinks about that. But one of the discussion items for that meeting is to come up with a plan for Camp Raleigh. And she's already asked that registration be delayed until we had our meeting and come up with our plan. So that goes back to we, you know, town halls closed for at least two weeks. What what is the status of other meetings? I would say as necessary. I think this is a necessary, you know, we're in this limbo period where we're ready to register unless we decide tonight to say no. I think I think they should meet. Well, so my only comment would be in as much as the new capacity of the conference room can handle and to encourage, you know, at least half of the group to call in rather than come in and the rest will be dispersed throughout the room. Yeah. I think that sounds what is it? When is um, the plan? The right? committee chair put out Thursday, and at least one person has responded negatively that they can't come. And I'm not sure about the rest of the committee. I didn't hear what you said. When is the next meeting? Thursday. Potentially Thursday, but no. It hasn't been set yet, but the committee chair has suggested this coming Thursday. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Is it this Thursday? This Thursday, but it's still. Not, not completely set. Well, we did at least move this Thursday off, for sure. Um, the one concern with moving it back is that we have grants that we were thinking to put in by the end of March, and we would need to have them approved by the committee and then by the select board. And if you're going to meet next Monday, your following meeting would be in April after the due date. No, but I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm new, so my dad yeah, might just first finish this first these next two weeks. We would have any town type meetings or anything we got to be. That's just my thought. I, I think that's definitely the intent. Um, I just want to bring you up to date because you didn't hear Celia's comment that she's concerned about um, grant deadlines due at the end of March, and um, so meeting this week so that the committee can confirm before the board would hear them. Um, it sounds like Paul and Miles are more interested in shutting down completely for two weeks meetings. I, I agree with shutting down for two weeks for meetings. 
I don't think that uh, if we get the grant, we know the grant. I mean, I think it's more important that we make sure that everything is safe um, for two weeks. So I don't think that we should be doing, we shouldn't have a meeting for two weeks. That's my opinion. The chances that it goes on are kind of small, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So, so, I mean, I know this is a different subject, but we just heard this happen in some states it's spread more than others, like Massachusetts has shut all restaurants now. In bars, yeah. In all bars and restaurants, so the only time you get food is takeout. So, I don't know. I think they're expecting a big, they're trying to stop the big wave, so everybody should try to do it. I do it all the time. It's the worst habit of mine. I do it again. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Tony. All right, so we all we're all in on that one. Give for a second. Sorry. Okay. Um, so then the only thing I have for the board outside of whatever the department has might want to address the board about is. Um, that the budget has passed, so um, whenever the budget passes, that doesn't mean the board automatically wants to do all the things that the budget included. So before you are the um, pay raises that were budgeted for in the budget, um, Denise has not seen them, and she's fine with them if um, if you two want to sign off on. Yeah, we budgeted for them. I think we should show up. We should go for it. Just the sign off. So one is for the police so that Bob can sign off on his people and also for the board. Um, that's just the best of all. And then all that's everybody who is not the police. Uh, do we do we make motions for these or? Um, yes, that would be good. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll move that we um, approve the raises um, for the uh, police department. It, well, as presented. Pres yeah. yeah, as presented. Okay. Second. Second, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And um, I'll also move that uh, we approve the, the budget raises for the rest of the town uh, employees as presented. I second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye.
line of work is your documentation. And if it's not done in 100% specific ways with certain uh, highlighted words and key notes that you include in your documentation, if it ever got far enough that it had to go to any sort of insurance claim or something, of course, the insurance companies don't want to pay for anything anyway. But if you don't get to this point and do it correctly, you won't even get in the ballpark. And this is coming from Primex because Dan took had a meeting with the Primex people today. Gave, gave him some of the key words that we're going to do. And, and by this in here is uh, what we need to follow as an EMS provider, first responder. Make on you also cheap as having some sort of directive in the documentation and writing on what exactly you want to do. Um, our personnel are out there going over that right now as far as what goes, who goes, what they're going to wear, everything that they're going to do so that's all in black and white so there's no questions. And basically, what we're going to do with our department is the only vehicle that initially is going to leave is utility with two people. That's all that's going on. If there's no officer on that piece, one of the officers, as soon as they get in here, will go in the car but only to be back as a marker, but also just to make sure that the directive is followed. Because I could, it could be a couple of my guys, and they, they're skilled enough, they may not be perfect on the decision-making end of it, so the officer will be there just to make sure that's all seen. And maybe nothing will be there 10 minutes, and those goes, we come back. But we're going to be limiting our exposure as much as we're all trying to do here, as you are at Town Hall. That's what we're going to do with, uh, as a department. I mean, it's nothing now, but that doesn't mean two weeks or a month this isn't becoming a heck of a lot more time. We you know we got someone coming back to Vegas tonight. What's that? We you know we got somebody coming back in Vegas tonight. Yeah, I heard that there was no uh, distancing in Vegas because I know somebody else that just came back from Vegas and that doesn't exist, so who knows what happens. I had a guy that just came back to Chicago. Uh, he didn't have to go through those long lines that you may have seen. He went a different way. But we've got everything pretty much totally by the nines so of what we have to have here as far as what we need to do to cover our end of it. Not only from our response directives, but also from our uh, documentation objectives. Those are the two biggest components for us. So, but it was going to be on paper, so that we're not going to do two pulls of caps or anything. So, on the FD side, we're all good to go. Any, any questions on that stuff? Or for uh, uh, Dan, Sean, and I were like three hours just today going through all the stuff, getting ready to go. We're making sure when you and I had a conversation, that's why I kind of wanted to thought it would be a good idea just to get. You as the governing body and whatnot, and our end of it, so we're all on the same page what we're supposed to be doing and what we're looking at. So, did we achieve that? Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot of work. And that's why I want to get the ambulance in here. We're also going to carry that out a bit more with the training and stuff. And Gene seems to be pretty well on the ball with everything and what he wants to do. So, this is going to spin off in a lot more stuff. I mean, we pay them to be here. So, mm -hmm. so we utilize that. I don't know if I can have uh, information to you, Mark, but I'm on the, the cargo team at the shipyard, so I'm involved with the shipyard and the risk there and stuff in the federal government, so we're getting updated all the time, right? All the time. You know, you know, the you know, you know, so, so I was listening tonight, and pretty much it was very, very much similar to all the stuff we've gotten so far. Yeah, and that's kind of where I wanted to go. It just changes all the time because there's one piece of idea that Jamie highlighted that she hadn't seen yet on all her research. And this, I printed it off before I came here tonight. So it came in my email at 4 o'clock this afternoon. And this is from, so what Stratford, what the state has done, especially in Stratford County, it's on the fire and the EMS side of it, is they divided it. Each county has a representative. And our woman's name is Mary Kerr. There's 12 fire departments that have, you know, 12 chiefs within the county. And she's the one that gets all this information. Rather than inundating her, and then being able to control the, the flow of information within the state, that's what the state has done on the fire side of things. Is this person is kind of our contact person. So, so. And I guess, Chief, the other, you ordered a bunch of stuff for Homeland Security for us for supplies and whatnot? Well, over the weekend, on this series of uh, security survey, uh, requesting uh, communities uh, let them know how many masks you have, gloves, face protection, uh, all works. Um, so I called the fire department yesterday, spoke with Sean. And uh, I uh, told them what we have and what we would like to have. And it's just going to the master list. Um, and it's up to Homeland Security at this point to try to come up with all of that equipment to start spreading out to all the communities. Because uh, we want to get it. At least they know what we have on hand now and what we're asking for. Uh, so. We have, uh, we dug through a lot of our stuff. And a lot of what you do when you go into these kind of emergencies, maybe we got hazmat type of incident. 
And we had some full suits. We have masks, we have gloves, we have enough so if we get any of these things, even though we're not in it yet, that we can respond and fully protect it. The one thing that um, is pretty much required that we don't have, and we're having a very hard time finding, is a certain type of respirator, which is an N95, which captures 99% of the type of articulates that you may be exposed to. We're still working to try to find that stuff. But everything else, we're good to go. At least we have something that can provide some level of protection, but just not the best yet. But that's what we requested through the chief and who made a request. So hopefully it's quicker than the way um, on that stuff. Other than that, we're, we're, we're right where we need to be. Okay. Sorry. You know, another thing that when we're talking, besides you, I was going to mention when we were talking earlier is, I know we're not thinking unless something changes drastically about closing the transfer station. Right. But, like you said, the people, even the guys are great not helping out there, but also, like, I mean, you can't say, hey, stop talking, move mm -hmm. people around, and not talking to It's a perfect thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I can't see closing it, and then you're going to have issues with no, storage at home, and you're going exactly. to have a bigger issue with yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we can keep a little. <coughs> we'll um, put a sign up if we have to, we'll just drop and go. Yeah, <coughs> that'd be perfect. I think we should probably put a note on the town website. Hey, I'll, I'll make a sign up tomorrow, put up at the yeah. gate, the drop and go, no hanging around. Now, we are getting updates daily from the Emergency Operations Center, and um, uh, last Friday, today, if you don't want to tomorrow on this Friday, uh, we participated in a conference call. And I believe that uh, they're not participating in a conference call as well. So, so we are getting updates uh, from public health and Perfect. Homeland Security and everybody, at least every couple of days. So. Is there anything, Bob, that you feel that you need that you don't have to deal with this? Well, the things that we talked about, I mean, we need the mask. Uh, we have plenty of gloves. They've got plenty of gloves for now. Um, the gowns, the booties, body protection, I mean, we, don't, we don't use more of that. And uh, unfortunately, all of those things are scarce to find right now. Okay. If you didn't order a month ago, you're not going to be able to find them right now. But hopefully the state, for their resources, will be able to, to replenish and supply the stuff to us. All right. You have to be able to do that now? Yeah. Is it uh, under 500? <laughs> when you started saying that, I probably should have looked at you or something. A couple different things also is, is one receipt from something that we got here today. And also, here is a letter from one of our members, uh, Matt Sylvester. He was with us maybe a year. And he needed affiliation with the fire department so that he could go to recruit school. The recruit school is usually like $3,800. Because he was with an affiliated fire department, it was $1,700. He has since graduated. He spent some other time with us. Now he's one of the guys that we told that he got hired permanently by the course of the fire department a couple, three months ago. Well, I'm giving it to you because this is his receipt for what he did. But he's also going to reimburse the community for the $1,770 that he paid for school. That's nice. Wow. That's not something you have to do, huh? Nice. Yeah, I guess he doesn't need to sign <laughs> But I just wanted to know that that's something that he's... That's awesome. He's going to go back and know he's going to go to your group general fund watch, right? Yes. So yes. That's really good. That's really it good. surprised me when I opened today and I, I talked to him. And then you look at that button. I will. It's a nice gesture. We'll have a selfish gun. Well, we, yeah. we helped him out at his yes. goal. <laughs>
we could choose some other items. So basically for the uh, $30,000, which is what the uh, Warren article is for, we're going to uh, get about $39,000 worth of equipment. And that's a complete replacement of the tools that we need out there. We're, we're getting a new cutter, new spreaders, um, the batteries, the chargers, we're going to get an electric ram with an extension kit, a uh, windshield removal kit, uh, like a sawzall kit, and a lighting kit. And that's a huge upgrade for everything that we have now. And it's at a bargain price. Alright. <clears throat> they still call it Jaws of Life, they change it. What's that? They still call it Jaws of Life, they call it. It still it. works. People will still know if you want to use that term, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, I'll move purchase order 1813 to Craig uh, Robichard. Yes. Um, for the, I was just said extra great um, yeah, equipment because um, there's a whole, there's a whole list here yeah. um, for thirty thousand yeah. dollars. I'll now look at it quick with that second. Yeah. Um, if you second it, and then um, we'll discuss uh, with Denise as well. I forget Denise is on the phone, um, and then vote. I'll second it. Because we want to, I wanted to get that in today as soon as I could because there's a time stamp on the promotion which they're running. And uh, in order for us to get this, what was the time stamp? Sometime in uh, April, did you say, Sean? Yeah. The gear has to be shipped by the end of April. And there are about a 30 day lead time to ship it. So, so we want to fit in there and save what we can save here. Yeah. So I'm kind of yeah. See, this is coming kind of out of CIP, so it's not our operating. The war on our budget yeah. was passed. Yeah. It's all CID, right? 30,000. Um, Denise? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you hear any of that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, any, any input? Yeah, whatever. It, I mean, it is coming out of CID, so it's not actually budgetary, so right. I'm okay with that. I just, you know, we do have to make sure that we start, you know, not pouring stuff. But if this is a time deal and it's CID money, it's already. You can't use it for anything else anyway. Right, right. Okay. Uh, all set, Paul? Yep. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 You've been looking for it for a while. So. We're in the same boat. What we have is just not even good to do any of the pieces. Once we did the next call, we would be able to handle Second oldest piece in New Hampshire? Yep. Can we put it in a museum now? <laughs> We're still going to keep it on board. We're still going to use it. <laughs> Because that can still have some use if we needed to sure. do a certain thing within the operation of the of education that can still perform. That's really all I got. I was going to mention we've also done some work on our other uh, um, more article item. Maybe I shouldn't bother with that. <laughs> That's new. Well, we've done some legwork on uh, on the new forestry, but uh, I'll just I'll leave it at that. We did legwork. Chief George, anything? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I will open it up to public comment at this point. <coughs> okay, it's quiet. Um, we should probably also um, nominate board officers. So oh, right. Yeah. So yeah, we have the meeting, but like, yeah. better late than never. So yes. Um, so every time there's a change in the makeup of the board, we, we reestablish. So I will nominate Denise Knowles as the board chair. I'll second that for now. So right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I shouldn't vote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll also nominate um, Paul Cass as um, select board clerk here. There are three positions, chair, vice chair, and clerk. Okay. Um,
Köszönöm szépen. Köszönöm szépen. Köszönöm szépen.